Hey, what's going on? Skull Gas here. This episode is about how to service a Porterton Kingfisher. If there's a particular video you want to see, then uh, just drop a comment below and I'll see what I can do. If you enjoy the video, please drop a like, subscribe, and if you push the post notification bell, you will see my videos as soon as they get posted. Don't forget to make a note of the temperature settings so you can set them back when you're finished. Here she is, Kingfisher MF. This one's fan fluid. Uh, it doesn't need ventilation. I'll do a screenshot of the manual here. Boiler well, hasn't been serviced in a while and the uh, terminal guard is completely destroyed and there's leaves and all sorts of foliage in there, bugs. So uh, Christ knows what's in the boiler. We'll find out. Couple of screws at the bottom. Take the panel off and then there's two more screws holding the case. Check the case seal once off. Then you can remove the front combustion box cover. Check the panel and the rest of the panels inside. Isolate the gas, undo the union nut, remove the electrical plug. And there's two screws on top there in the uh, combustion box you want to undo those as well and the whole burner will pull out careful not to just yank it out because the electro cable is still attached here's the inside not too bad actually a few bugs but well, that's to be expected but we're going to give it a bloody good clean undo the screw holding the pilot assembly in place then undo the two nuts and the pilot tube and then you can wiggle that free and the pilot assembly will come downwards because you've got the cable there for the electrode. Using a blunt object like a hex key, you can put it in the pilot assembly, get the injector out, give it a little spin, free it up and it should fall out. And from here, we can give it a blast with the air duster, make sure we get any debris out. Have a little look, make sure you can see daylight through the hole, make sure it's nice and clear before putting it back in the pilot assembly. Give the electrode a little clean up. To remove the fan and flue hood, Two screws holding the flue hood in, one screw holding the fan. Uh, they can get a bit seized on, so you might have to ease it out of a flathead. Uh, remove all the cables and the uh, tube in as well, connected to the fan. Pull the fan out first, and then followed by the flue hood. Uh, check the seals. If needed, you're going to need to replace them. Back to the terminal guard. Brand new terminal guard. Cleared out all the foliage in there, all the insects. And so we can go on to the inside of the boiler now. I have advised the customer to trim back these branches so it won't happen again. But uh, we'll see. Now you're going to need your brush, something skinny. Go in the uh, heat exchanger, top and bottom. Give that a good clean out. If that won't fit in, then a blunt junior hacksaw blade will go in there nicely. And then you can go in there, give each each section a clean top and bottom. Start from the top and then do the bottom. Get the hoover out, hoover up any leftover debris, any creepy crawlies, anything in the combustion box above, anything actually around the boiler. You don't want it getting in there, you want it to burn nice and clean. Give the case a good clean. Um, then we want to go onto the actual burner itself. Use a soft bristle brush and uh, make sure that's nice and clean to burn freely.
Now the flue hood, the rope seal, is uh, a bit perished and we're going to strip that down, replace that. I've got some high temperature silicone and uh, various rope seals. I'm uh, going to put the right size and just renew that so it's all sealed. Combustion box is gleaming. You can eat your dinner off that. Make sure the fan seals are good. Uh, I'm going to replace the turret end one as that sort of crumbled when we took it out. Got some fan oil. Want to put it in there where the shaft goes through the actual fan assembly. Keep all that going. Get the bearings nice and oiled up. Um, try to avoid getting any on the electrics on the motor itself. Some of the silicon tubing is all hardened and, and uh, brittle and it's broken off on the end here so I'm going to cut that off and renew that silicon tubing as well. Now the burner's back in place, screws all tight, pilot assembly back together. Um, compression nut is done up on the gas union so I'm going to turn the gas back on, spray any joints that you've disturbed. Flue hood's nice and ready to go, brand new seal, I'm going to bang that on. Uh, burner lit, I'm going to spray the pilot tube, uh, I'm going to spray it with the case off in a minute as well. Any joints, any test points you've opened, just make sure you spray after. If in doubt, spray twice, more than twice. Inlet pressure, it's always the one closest to the gas incoming, so that test point get your gas inlet pressure, make sure that's fine. And then you could also turn the boiler on, get a working pressure from here. Make sure you isolate the gas whenever you're putting your hose on or off the test point. Don't want any leaks and it's professional and it's by the book. A couple of screenshots of the manual, uh, shows you the gas valve layout and the adjustment screw, which way to turn, and also the uh, specifications. Uh, you've got all your burner outputs, all the other readings here for the different models. The burner pressure we're after here is 13 millibar. So we're on the burner test point. I want to get as close to 13 as possible. Not too far out, to be honest. Uh, this one's clockwise to bring it down. So, uh, nice and gently, a little bit at a time. The burner's been on for 10 minutes already. And I uh, want to get it as close to 13 as possible. Lastly, boiler all back together, make sure it lights, make sure you ain't got any cables trapped in there. I like to give it a little clean if it's a bit grubby, uh, a bit of grease on this one, so just so it looks good, as good on the outside as it does on the inside. I'm happy with that, job done. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe.